the early game player, the mid game player, and the end game player. All of these players have different focuses and goals that they should be working on. This video is going to tell you what the heck all of those are and how to do them. So strap on in, I'm going to explain everything. First, we'll start with the daily grind for everybody. Everybody should do this. Adventure board, jump on in here and do everything. I don't care if you understand what it is, just do it. You're gonna get all kinds of good stuff. You're gonna get gems, you're gonna get keys, you're gonna get souls, you're gonna get deeds. All of these things are super important. So you do them all and you just do it and you don't complain about it. That's what you do. If you can't complete all of these, like some of these harder ones, that's fine. Just go as far as you can. You got me? Got it. Great. Do your adventure board. Then, you jump into the dungeon, you do all of these, I don't care, you try them, you do them, if you can't complete them yet, you just try again the next day, but you work your tail off to try and get these done, get them done. You jump into the offer, you see the gem bounty, you buy it, you don't care, you just buy it. And then, after all of that, you go down under, and you look around in here and you say, oh, I haven't completed this delve yet. And you jump in and you do your delves. You do all three of them, you hear me? You're gonna get your ingots and you're gonna like them. That is a bare minimum of what you should be doing every day. Every single day. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's actually talk to each player group individually. Starting with the beginners. Alright beginners, I know that sounded harsh and I'm sorry. I'm very very sorry, but now I'm talking directly to you guys. So, when it comes to being a beginner, Really, your primary goal is to get event ready. You need to get yourself to the point where you can start competing in events. And where that starts is in the guild menu. You have to join a guild to participate in the events. So if you are not in a guild, you need to absolutely get into one. There's a guild finder within the game in this screen. Or you can jump into Discord, you can jump into the community forums, you can jump on Reddit. You need to find yourself a guild. There's plenty of guilds that support beginner players, but you gotta get in a guild. And the reason you jump into a guild is that they get you resources by contributing into the guild and you also get stat benefits and you get access to the events that we need to get ready for. So get in a guild, tip number one. Then what we're going to be doing is making your map look like my map. So in my map you'll notice I've got all of these fancy places in here and you might only have like three of them or maybe seven of them but you don't have all of them yet. If you don't have them all yet, you are still a beginner player and I am talking directly to you. So your goal is to unlock every single one of these. Don't worry about all the fancy shiny stuff you see me put in my videos, all the cool weapons, all the upgraded troops, all the mythics, my god, it looks so exciting. Forget about it, don't even look at it. What you need to be doing is getting your map looking all fancy like this. So in order to get that done, there's this handy little picture that they've included on their website. And by they, I mean the Gems of War developers. So this map basically covers where all of the kingdoms are in the order that they unlock in. So things that are a zero is what you get by default. And then when you complete it, you unlock the ones. And when you complete those, you unlock the twos, etc., etc. The other thing that I'll tack onto this picture here is that you also unlock other things. So at the first level, you're going to be getting a treasure hunt. Not super exciting. At level two, you're going to be unlocking the vault pretty important to make sure you get done so you can use those keys that you're going to get. At level 3 you're going to unlock basically nothing, at level 4 you get nothing, at level 5 you get nothing, not literally nothing but nothing worth talking about, and at level 6 you unlock the dungeon. So when I was talking about those dungeons, that's what that is, so you have to get to level 6 as quickly as you can. And then at level 7 you get access to the Soul Forge, which is going to allow you to actually craft cool weapons and cool mythics and cool legendary troops. So that's what you're going to get at level 7. At level 8, you get access to the Underworld, so you can actually get those ingots that I was talking about, as well as some other cool benefits. And then at level 9, you get nothing. And then at level 10, you just get some deeds. Cool. So you're going to jump in, and you're going to do the quest line for every single kingdom. So in here where it's saying quest complete for me, you want yours to look exactly the same way. You're going to do all of those quests. And then when you're done with those quests, if there's a class quest, you're going to do that too. You're going to get them done. So you're going to jump in, you're going to unlock every single kingdom, and you're going to unlock every single class. And that is going to get you in a really nice spot in the game. You'll have access to all the different options in the game. You're in a cool guild that's getting you resources. You have access to the underworld to start getting ingots. 
you got a bunch of random troops just by playing around in there. That is your number, number one goal. The only other goal that I'm going to mention to you is that there is a class and a couple of weapons that are absolutely mandatory to not call yourself a beginner anymore and enter the mid game. And that is Mountain Crusher and Mang. So, Mountain Crusher, ta-da! It's this guy. It's, wait for it, this guy. Mountain Crusher explodes the board. This makes you a ton of mana. This should be used in pretty much every lineup while you're in the early game because there's nothing quite like it. Everyone uses it. It's the best. You'll get this by just getting your brown gem mastery up to a little bit. I believe it's 13. So if you want to just force get this thing quicker, just every single time it tells you, do you want to level up blue or do you want to level up brown? You say brown. You say brown every time. And then you're good to go. Once you get this, then you can go back to leveling them all up evenly. The other weapon that you need to get yourself is a Mang, because since we're trying to get ourselves a vent ready, this is the weapon you're going to use to do it. This is going to destroy all the armor on some other troop and then give you a ton of attack. And the problem with the vents is, is that these troops on the other enemy team, they get stupid high. They get crazy, crazy high. So when they have 200 armor and 200 health and they're doing 100 damage, what the heck? You use Mang and you give yourself a ton of attack and then you can smack them all dead. Super great. But Keylime. How the hell am I going to survive that if they're doing 200 damage? Well, I'm glad you asked, beginner. What you're going to do is get yourself this Titan class, and you are going to get this bad boy up to level 40. When you get this up to level 40, you're going to give yourself a barrier on every brown you get. This class is the best class in the game. It's considered the overall best, most dynamic, most useful class that there is. So you're going to get this class all the way up to 40. If you're unlocking all your kingdoms, you're doing it with this class. You hear me? And then you're going to be good to go. You're going to have your Mountain Crusher, you're going to have your Mang, you're going to have your Titan, you got all your kingdoms, you've unlocked all the stuff, and then you've ascended to the holy land of the mid-game. Let's talk to you now, Mr. Mid-Gamer. Why hello, Mr. or Mrs. Mid-Gamer. Welcome to your section of the video. You have a separate goal from the beginner folks, and that is to get everything to get every single thing you get all the stuff so what does that actually mean it means that all of your kingdoms you have them all now great now you got to get them to level 10 level 10 means that you get an extra stat extra stat means extra happiness in life this gives it to every single person in your lineup every single person in your troop menu they all get an extra stat in this case it's life and another one it's magic and another one it's attack there's 34 different stats you make sure you get so in order to get these up to level 10, you're going to do yourself a ton of PvP. You see this menu here? This PvP menu? This is your life now. This is all you ever do. You jump into PvP, you click the hardest fight, and you beat it. Because you get a ton of gold, and you get a lot of glory. And what is that used for? The gold is used to level up the kingdoms. You jump in here, and you buy those tiers. You buy it up to level 10. You hear me? Get it to level 10. And then with all that glory, you jump into the chest menu. You see these glory keys? You just keep opening these bad boys. You just open them nonstop. You just don't stop opening glory keys until you get all the troops that you could possibly ever want and desire. That is what you are doing the entire mid game. You are making sure that you are as optimized as possible and you have all the stuff. You want to get all the stuff. So when it comes to getting all the stuff, that also includes getting your power levels up to level five. Why level 5? Because you get another stat. That gives you yet another stat. So when your kingdoms are up to level 10 and your power levels are up to level 5, that's 2 extra stats for every kingdom. That is 68 extra stats that you are leaving on the table if you do not get this up to level 5. The other reason you want to get this up to level 5 is that you increase your tribute chances, which means you get more gems. More gems equals more happiness, you hear me? More gems, more happiness, more stats, even more happiness. So that is your goal. You try and unlock every single troop in the guild chest menu and the glory keys over here and then you just get all these things to level 10 and you get the power levels to level 5 and then you're in a really good spot. You jump into your troop menu and you sort by base rarity and you see tons of this light blue color, this cyan goodness. Oh yeah, that feels good. Oh, and then you jump down into the legendaries and you're like, I basically got them all. Great, good for you. You are in a really good spot. That is your entire focus. All these other game modes, they're trash. You don't touch them. You do your daily grind and you do PvP. That is your life, soldier. And then, once you've got all the fun stuff, 
as many troops as you can. All your kingdoms are level 10, the power level up to level 5. Now you have entered the end game. Let's talk to those people. Oh, hello there, Mr. and Mrs. Endgamer. Look at you, thinking you're all fancy, you got all the cool stuff, you got all these extra stats, you got all these troops and weapons. You don't need my help, right? Wrong! You don't know anything! You're an idiot! This is what you need to be focusing on. Remember that PvP mode that we talked to those mid-game players about? You don't touch this crap anymore. This isn't what you need. This is the worst mode for you possible. Why are you doing this? You already have all the troops you need, you already have all the gold you could possibly want. Why are you touching PvP besides getting it up to tier 1? You get it up to tier 1 and you never touch it again. This mode is crap now. You jump into explore mode. Explore mode is your new hotness. This is now your best friend. You only ever go in this mode. You jump into explore mode and you do all those fights. You get your mythic boss fights. You get your boss chests. You then get up in here and you look at all these medals and badges and tokens. This is your life now. This is all you care about. You jump in here and you make sure that you've got yourself at least three Nisha medals. You've got yourself at least one medal of Anu. You've got yourself three Cedrics. You've got yourself way too many of these other medals that don't really help you all that much. You get your attack medals and badges and everything. You get them all. You're just doing this mode constantly. You're getting all the gold you could possibly want. You're making your guild super happy because you're donating everything. You're just pumping this bad boy up. You're getting legendary tasks like out the butt here. You're so happy. Because now, you are in optimization mode, my friend. You already have all the troops. You think you've got every single one. You probably don't, but you've got most of them. Maybe you've got them all. But I bet you don't have a fancy little metal badge next to them. You don't have that nice little gold border that lets you know, this troop is amazing. This troop has all of the stat optimization they could possibly have. We don't have any of this yet, and this is going to take us years and years and years. So you jump into Explore and that's the only mode you touch. If you're touching PvP once you get it past Tier 1, you are wasting your time. You are doing nothing of value for yourself. And if your guild's telling you that trophies are important, they're wrong. They don't do crap. So you do Explore over and over and over and over again. And then you jump into your guild events and you're doing all of your guild events. And you're completing all of them. You're getting all the orbs you could possibly want. You're buying every single weapon when it's available in the shop. You don't look at this shop and you just think, oh, I don't need to do it. You jump in here and you get the weapon every time. And then your guild, you'll complete the event every single time. And the legendary tasks, you'll be getting a ton of those for even more resources. And then the underworld. Oh, the underworld. You'll be jumping in here and making sure every single one of these things is up to level 500. If these aren't up to level 500, that means you're not getting your total renown rewards. These total renown rewards get you even more stats. So if you don't have all of these stats, you are missing out on life. Look at me. Look at me in my pathetic total renown rewards section. I don't even have this extra stat here. Scrolling down, I don't have any more extra stats after that. I need to get this higher. I am a noob. So this is what you do in the end game. You are making sure that you optimize all of your troops in the explore mode. You are getting every single stat that this game has to offer. You are making sure all of your classes are leveled up as high as they possibly can. You look inside this class menu and you think, oh, I've got my Titan up to 100, I've got my Sun Spear up to 100, what else do I need? You need all these things, because when it comes to different team lineups, all of these classes have value at some point. Sure, some of them totally suck. I'm not talking about the Warlord class. <laughs> no, they're okay. No, I'm not talking about all those. I'm just saying that you need to get all of these leveled up all the way to 100, because if you don't have it all the way up to 100, and they suddenly get good, you suck. So you get these up to 100. You get it up to 100 right now. And that is what you are doing in the end game. The perpetual grind, the never lasting fight to get all of your troops as great as they possibly can, to get your classes as high as they possibly can, to get your delves all the way up to the tippity top. And when new stuff comes out, you get it right away because you're such a pro. And then, once you've done that, you can die happy, peaceful, you have done everything. Until the next week when new stuff comes out and you got even more crap to do.